This is CBC. Good evening. We begin with a story of ordinary people coping with an extraordinary tragedy. It's hard to look at the scenes of devastation and not imagine, what if it had been my home, my community? On May 31st, 1985, it's the middle of our planting season. We plant potatoes. I'm in the potato business. So it would just rain before and it was windy, so we had everything put in the shop. And it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And my dad was there, and my one man, and myself. And then we heard this noise coming. We thought it was my brother coming back with the track and trailer. There was a roar, and it sounded more like a freight train. And all of a sudden, this 24 by 14 door just shattered like toothpicks right in on us. We set up the stage for severe weather for the late afternoon hours. The first tornado touched down in Ontario roughly after 4 p.m. A pair of tornadoes struck Barrie, Ontario, which are some of the most powerful in Canada's history. The storm produced a total of 13 across southern Ontario, the largest number recorded in the province in a single day. The deadliest tornadoes took place across eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. The small town of this is what the farm looked like before the tornado hit. Trees along the background, the 70-foot silo, and the buildings, and the fertilizer blender. It had a 100 ton of fertilizer in before it blew over. All these buildings were blown away. The silo was taken off about 12 feet up, and all of these trees, except for three or four, were totally taken off, maybe five feet high. They just twisted off like toothpicks. My parents' house, which was on that property, it turned a foot and a half sitting on the foundation. My mom was in the house. The mud and the debris from everything, she couldn't even see out the window. Some of the windows were broken. She opened the door and could see everything was gone. About 15 seconds after the roar came through and took all the buildings, sidewalls down, I could hear people calling my name. I was under debris from the wind and finally Harmon our man pulled me out I got up and had a look around and the first 20 minutes I was devastated I it's it's hard to imagine how you feel when you see something like that and it's it, it's just like I wrecked my car, but it's everything. Probably five miles of damage right from that tornado that hit down in our yard. Two of our tractor trailers were sitting there and rolled them down the road a quarter of a mile. Tailgate off one was in the neighbor's, which was a mile and seven eighths away. We went to the hospital to get checked over. I got in the reception area and I said, I have to use your phone. So I went to the hospital and there was Bruce in the administrator's office. He still had mud all over. He had his leg out in the wheelchair, totally bandaged up. But there he was on the phone trying to get hold of the contractor. He was ready to rebuild and he wanted to be first on the list. Once I got it all added up and told, it was 22 pieces of equipment and all the buildings were gone. It was very hard for us because I wasn't expecting to lose a million and a half dollars worth of equipment and buildings all in one shot. The determination to do it, I knew we could go forward once we got talking, but we had a family meeting, we met with our 
insurance people. We met with our accountants. That, that's, they're the big people. You got to know your numbers. So. I did make up my mind right there. My dad said, I don't think we can rebuild this. Are you going to be in the potato business or the cattle business? We can't afford to do both right now. So I was determined that we are going to do it. So with a very good meeting with my bank manager and the backing of my bank manager, we set up a corporation and moved on. Seeing you in the hospital there, I knew things were going to be okay, that you you had not lost one bit of your determination and your drive and your perseverance. And it didn't even cross my mind that we would not rebuild this whole business. Of course we would. And I knew that you were in 110%. Sunday morning, everything was organized. People came ready to work. A local neighbor had arranged wagons and tractors for people to walk through the planted fields to pick up the debris that was on the surface. A busload of Mennonites came with their chainsaws on Monday morning. They were trimming all the dead trees. We were members at Devil's Glen. That crew came down for a week and cleaned up all the trees around my parents' house. They brought trailers, they set up food. People, every person working there had a drink and food when they needed it. It was just unbelievable. It was amazing. I, I think about it still. We had a great loss and the community supported us. There was hundreds of people making this operation come back to work. To be a farmer and to do this situation, you gotta have it in your blood, just like any other occupation. You have it in your blood, you do it. And that's, that's what we did.